Well, the most famous congressperson from Georgia appeared on Fox News recently. Uh, had a toxic Tucker Carlson. I'm gonna call him Toxic Carlson, and I thought I'd give my reaction to it. So it looked pretty crazy in New York yesterday. And of course, looking crazy was the whole point of this to terrify swing voters into never voting for Donald Trump. What was it like? Well, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia was there for the arraignment. And before she arrived, the mayor of the city already failed just a year into office. Eric Adams described her as a criminal and implied he would punish her if she misbehaved. Meanwhile, actual lunatics showed up and prevented her from speaking. Watch. Sir, can I ask what those are for? Um, so we hear that Marjorie Taylor Greene is coming to the city um, right here. So we brought some whistles to hand out to people to drown her out with some noise. That's a sitting member, an elected member of the Congress. Everyone can see where this is going. Marjorie Taylor Greene joins us tonight to recount what she saw in New York yesterday. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. What was that like? Well, it was absolute chaos, and that's what the mayor of New York City wanted to happen to me. You see, he threatened me and basically put out a dog whistle for violence against me. And then there was a funded text alert that went out naming me by name and telling people to do exactly what that man was doing, hand out whistles and try to create a chaotic scene of violence and assault. And that's against the law, by the way, Tucker. You see, they didn't want me to be able to protest and use my First Amendment rights. And they wanted violence. I think they wanted that to happen because they want to repeat January 6th all over again. They want all of us Trump supporters, MAGA, um, basically Republicans and just good Americans to look like criminals. And that's what they do in communist countries. And that's actually what we're seeing today. Well, the first thing to do, of course, is take away your freedom to speak. And if you can't say what you really think, then you're not a free person. You're a slave. And once you are, then there's really nothing they can't do to you. I, do you think people understand the implications of not allowing someone to speak? I, I don't think they do. I don't think people realize what dangerous times we're living in. You see, the Democrat Party, they're the fascists. They want to cancel our voices. They want to censor us. And they want to completely force us into complying. You see, the reason why they're prosecuting, or should we say persecuting, Donald Trump is for the crime of actually winning the 2016 presidential election. That's what they're in hysterics over, and they've never gotten over it. But what they really want to do is once they remove their top political opponent, which is President Trump, they're going to come after all of us. This has happened repeatedly throughout yeah. history, and people need to wake up to the reality of the danger we're living in. Really quick, since you were just there, but Mayor Adams described New York as, quote, his home. How did his home look? Pretty neat and tidy? No, his home is disgusting. I compared it to what I called Gotham City. The streets are filthy. They're covered with people um, basically dying on drugs. They can't even stand up. They're falling over. There's so much crime in the city. I can't, I can't comprehend how people live there. Um, it was repulsive. It smells bad. And I just, I think it's a terrible place. Yeah, with some nice people, I will say that. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, mm -hmm. just back from New York. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tucker. So the interview starts with Tucker claiming that uh, Mayor Adams described Marjorie Taylor Greene as a criminal, which is not true. His actual statement was, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is known to spread misinformation and hate speech, while you're in town, be on your best behavior. I don't, I don't see where that in any way describes her in a manner that is considered criminal. When you go to some of her remarks, um, she says that they tried to create a chaotic scene with whistles, that they want to repeat January 6th all over again. Well, and then she starts going into this thing about how they're trying to take away her free speech. And, and my argument is, if she was able to go into a public setting and talk about whatever she wanted. And the pushback to that was not people trying to remove her from there or like physically grab her out of the area. But the, the response to that was them simply doing something so they don't have to listen to her. And she can still go and speak about these things either on the internet or in other venues. I, I don't see where her free speech is being taken away. Um, 
I don't know. I, like, I, I'm more inclined to say when somebody gets banned off a website or kicked off somewhere altogether. But if you go to a, a location and people all decide to whistle to drown you out or they put in headphones, it seems to me that you're still able to talk. You just are seeing other people exercise their right to not listen to. Just like if I upload a video and people don't watch it because they don't agree with it, they don't like me, whatever, that's their right. I can still upload. I, I, it's just people can also choose to not listen to me. And this this interview is uh, just kind of one thing she says that I want to put special emphasis on is that Trump the, the real crime that Trump had was winning the 2016 election and they've never gotten over it. I think that is true to an extent as far as there are a lot of Democrats who convince themselves that um, he won by collusion with the Russians, that this was, you know, he was illegitimately installed by Putin. Although I will say the charges seem to be pretty verifying as far as we know that, you know, he paid hush money to Stormy Daniels, but whatever. The, the interesting part is where she says that after uh, they're done persecuting Trump, they're going to come after all of us MAGA Republicans and they, they want us to look like, uh, she said this during the part about how uh, when the people were protesting against her, they wanted violence. And they want them to look like criminals. But how does drowning out someone's voice make them look like a criminal? Like if you if I go to a rally for Trump and I'm sitting there and I'm throwing stuff and whatever. How does that make him look bad? <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm the one who's doing something that is weird or off-putting or, you know, just strange. But where she talks about how they're going to go after the rest of them. Well, I don't know. There's plenty of Republicans who agree with Trump on pretty much everything that have never been targeted by the law. Um, Liz Cheney, who was someone that, despite people trying to do revisionist history, very much of the Trump brand, voted with him 92% of the time in the House, has never faced any criminal charges because she's never done anything considered by American law to be criminal. Uh, you could say the same thing about pretty much most members of the party. So really, I, I, that's the part where she's trying to like make it seem as if the law is now being weaponized against all Republicans. But I, I don't I don't think that's that's going to happen. Republicans and Democrats do a lot of stuff that uh, we, we talked before about the legalized bribery in America and uh, how, you know, corporations give money to politicians and say that that's free speech. There, there's a lot of stuff you could go after members from both parties with that's actually violating of the law. But the actual stuff that we choose to focus on um, is certainly not going to spill out to other people who just so happen to be in the same party as Trump. They're not they're not going to prosecute all or even most members of Congress. I'm I'm willing to bet that or rather most members of Congress that are Republicans. I I highly doubt that. Um so just to close this out is <laughs> this this was my favorite part when Tucker asked her what did the you know like what was the street clean cuz uh, Mayor Adams described his you know this is his home and she said that the streets are filthy and covered in people that's really interesting because Adams had a homeless policy that was based around removing homeless people from inside buses and various uh, stations so if she saw people around and i you know i have no reason to i guess disbelieve that there, i mean there's homeless people everywhere but if she saw people around there that means that his policy must be failing, and I'm glad it is. And and really, like I said, um, I'm I'm in no business of defending a lot of these Democrats. And in this story, I really don't think there's a person who's heroic as far as someone who I'm more on the side of. But I have to say, they it, it's it's really interesting that I'm put in this position of having to defend a pretty lousy mayor by saying, hey, you know, he didn't actually threaten her or tell her anything that really. I mean, like she spreads misinformation. She lies about the 2020 election being stolen. So I like what he said is true. And this is the same lady when he was talking about hate speech who said that um, th that what was it Omar and Talib were not real members of Congress because they weren't sworn the Bible. So there's legitimacy to what he said about her. But her criticisms of his city looking terrible, 
um, I think are legitimate as well. Even though I do think part of it's probably just out of you know spite. Um, <laughs> and when she compared New York to New York City to Gotham City, I'm just imagining like she she shows up in New York after uh, deciding you know to come out there and show vote for Trump, and you hear da 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 da. Marjorie Taylor Green, Marjorie Taylor Green, Marjorie Taylor Green. <laughs> I mean, look, I have no no issue admitting when cities run by Democrats are not doing well. Even though I think a lot of it has more to do with the policies versus the party, um, but I I I how I put it this way, I highly doubt that if there was an alternate scenario where. Um, let's say she was mayor of New York, that things would be any better. I'm just, that that's just my speculation. I, I just don't believe that she would um, institute policies that would be radically different from Adams that are actually going to help people. But really, this is interesting because you have this person who goes to a state, or a, rather a city that is um, leaning in the opposite direction of their party, and they run into a direct conflict with the mayor as well as the people that live there and their response to the opposition from the mayor and the people that live there is to basically say the people are nasty, right? They can't even stand up and the mayor is doing a bad job, which I'm not going to dispute. <laughs> I mean, Adams is the same buffoon that held up a sponge when they were talking about gun violence. So I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that he's doing a good job, but it's, it's, it's just really interesting that she goes there to make a show over trying to like stand with Trump during his arraignment and ends up basically getting mad when the show has people participate in a way that she doesn't like. As I said before, free speech is something that you can have a legitimate conversation about the rights being taken away, but I don't see how it's being taken away when people whistle or uh, don't show up to your event. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just think if, if her speech was really being taken away, they would ban her from the city. They would uh, have had the state troopers or other law enforcement officials trying to get her out of there. But that didn't appear to happen. So I, I, I guess with a lot of these people, when they do something, they just don't expect any protest. And you, you see this a lot with with the um, with politicians. I mean, let's not forget we had a whole controversy about uh, Huckabee Sanders back when she was the uh, what the press secretary for Trump being told, being asked to leave from a restaurant, <laughs> you know, like you can go eat somewhere else and spread your stuff, just not here. But it's like, if you, if you push back on people anywhere, even if it's, if it's a, if it's a city block or a, a damn turning lane, they will tell you that their free speech is being taken away. And really the fact that she's able to go on Fox or her own channel or Twitter and say, my free speech is being taken away is pretty um, much evidence that it's not. You're, you're just saying stuff that people are pushing back on. But yeah, this this was a, a, a goofy interview. And again, my favorite part is her <laughs> comparing New York to Gotham. There's there, like there's so many other cities that I think fit that bill better, especially Chicago. People call it Chirac for a reason. But now I'm just imagining her showing up in her like uh, she. I have seen her wear red before. Like so, she has like a like a red costume. And she swoops in and denounces all of these policies and, in, in like, in turn creates this, like, radical change of uh, of of great quality for all the people. It, it's just, like, I, I guess the fact that that was what she described the city as, knowing that there are more dangerous cities and there's homeless people all over the place in America uh, is just what, what kind of has me amused by the, the whole plot. And, and the fact that she was, she, she went to a city that she probably already didn't think too well of because it's run by Democrats, you know, and she's partisan. And after very brief skirmishes with the mayor and some of the people that live there, she just trashes everybody. And it's like, that's why, one of the reasons why the country is so divided, but whatever.